Welcome to the Pooley's audio ground training series, CD number one, Aviation Law and Operational Procedures. Unit one, Introduction. Almost every aspect of life is regulated to a greater or lesser degree, and flying is no exception. Aviation law is one of the examinations you will have to pass before you can qualify for your private pilot's license. It is a subject which can cause students a good deal of trouble, but in order to become a safe and responsible pilot, you must know and abide by the law. As pilots, we share the air with many users in many different craft, from commercial airliners to microlights, and it is essential that we know legally what we can and cannot do so that we do not compromise safety for ourselves or any other airspace users. Any publication that sets out the rules and regulations to which we as pilots must adhere must do so in a way that will not lead to any misinterpretation of the law. Therefore, generally, everyday language is not used which can make the core documents somewhat inaccessible. Even so, as a PPL, it is your responsibility to keep up to date with the latest regulations, not only in preparation for your air law examination, but also throughout your flying career, the latest documents should always be referenced. As we progress through this CD, we will examine the rules and procedures, the types of airspace within which we will operate, the regulations governing the operation of aircraft and licensing, and of course, the rules of the air. There is a lot of legislation, so this CD alone cannot be considered as a definitive source. Our aim is to pick out the important information and present it in, hopefully, a user-friendly way. The UK CAA is a full member of the JAA, and joining this organisation has led to some changes in the air law syllabus. For one thing, the title has been changed to reflect the inclusion of operational procedures. ICAO procedures are now just as likely to be examined as UK procedures, as pilots are now being prepared to fly throughout Europe, not just in the UK. The next phase in European harmonisation has already begun with the establishment of EASA, the European Aviation Safety Agency. This agency will be the common rulemaking and standard setting organisation for safety regulation on behalf of all member states. It has, as of October 2008, already taken over aircraft and product certification, as well as overseeing rules relating to aircraft maintenance and design. In time, EASA's rulemaking role will extend to include aircraft operations, flight crew licensing and air traffic management. There may very well be further changes associated with the handover. Aviation law and legislation. We would first like to talk about the Chicago Convention and ICAO. In 1919, a convention was held in Paris to establish some procedures for the fledgling civil aviation industry. Following the First World War, the benefits of air travel were becoming evident, but so were problems associated with crossing the territories of different nations and landing at suitably equipped and prepared airfields. There were further meetings, but the major landmark towards international cooperation was the Chicago Convention of November 1944. Here, 55 participating states met and established some basic principles for the safe and efficient development of civil aviation. A permanent body was formed in 1947 to promote the standards and recommended practices developed by the Convention internationally. The body was called the International Civil Aviation Organization, or ICAO. It was, and still is, based in Montreal, Canada. Thanks to ICAO, modern civil aviation benefits perhaps more than any other industry from a large degree of international standardization. The standards and recommended practices are organised into 18 annexes. All states have the right to replace these rules and regulations with their own national laws, but in this case must ensure that the details are published in their National Aeronautical Information Publications, or AIP for short. For example, in altimetry, the ICAO standard unit of measurement is the hectopascal. However, the UK uses it as millibars and the United States inches of mercury and both states will have filed a difference with ICAO to do so. The most important annexes are Annex 1, Personnel Licensing Annex 2, Rules of the Air Annex 3, Meteorological Services Annex 4, Aeronautical Charts Annex 5, Units of Measurement Annex 6, Operation of Aircraft Annex 7, 
Aircraft Nationality and Registration Marks Annex 8 – Airworthiness of Aircraft Annex 9 – Facilitation Annex 10 – Telecommunications Annex 11 – Air Traffic Services Annex 12 – Search and Rescue Annex 13 – Aircraft Accident Investigation Annex 14 – Aerodromes Annex 15 – Aeronautical Information Services Annex 17 – Security And finally Annex 18 – The Transport of Dangerous Goods We would like to discuss some of these articles developed at the Chicago Convention in 1944. The articles contain the fundamental principles adopted at the meeting and you will need to be familiar with them as they form part of the Joint Aviation Regulations Flight Crew Licensing PPL syllabus and are included in the examinations. In this context, state means a contracting nation to the Chicago Convention.